Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. Thanks for riding along. My name is Jim. For the song of the week, we have Georgia On My Mind, sung by Ray Charles and released in 1960. This great song was written in 1930 by Hoagie Carmichael and Stuart Gorell. Ray Charles' version is the official state song of the state of Georgia. It became number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Here's what you don't know about the song, because you probably knew all that other stuff, or maybe did. You know Ray Charles. What a genius, musical genius Ray Charles was. Hoagy Carmichael wrote a bunch of hit songs in the 1930s, including Stardust, Up a Lazy River, Georgia On My Mind, Heart and Soul, and others. His star is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He's in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. He was in 14 movies, including Topper, Laramie, and The Flintstones. The Flintstones, yeah, in The Flintstones. He was the first artist of this kind to use electronic microphones and the new tech television and other things that were coming out that was what we would call state-of-the-art now back then. He is considered the greatest of the Tin Pan Alley songwriters. His music was kind of like jazz, is the best I can describe it. And you can find him on YouTube saying things like Georgia on my mind. Rolling Stone magazine has named Ray Charles' version of Georgia on my mind the 44th greatest song of all time. Hoagie Carmichael won several Grammys and Academy Awards in his lifetime. Here's what you don't know, even if you did know that other stuff that I figured you didn't know about Hoagie Carmichael. He's my fourth cousin once removed. Now, I always thought that all my ancestors were farmers and merchants. I really never thought I had somebody that was in the entertainment field at all. And I stumbled across this kind of really by accident and I printed off a little thing about him and put it in my ancestry bookmarks on my computer. So I do a little bit of genealogy, not much. But when my wife came home from the play Chicago that one of my grandchildren were in, she said that they announced that Hoagie Carmichael had written Georgia on my mind. So I started looking for Hoagie a little deeper, and I did verify that he wrote the song. So then to find him in a family tree, and if you've ever done this, you know that the branches get quite complicated going out. And it took me a long time to find him. I had to go backwards, and then I finally found his great-great-grandfather, and then I had to go forwards to find Hoagie. And I stopped there. I didn't check out his children or anything. But he was born in the same town that my dad was basically born in, just a couple miles up the road. I still have relation in the town he was born in. That's where he came from, and that's where my dad and all his family came from. Hoagie's family came over on the boat over the Atlantic from Europe with my ancestors' family, and they all settled in North Carolina. Hoagie's great-great-grandmother married my great-great-great-grandfather. Carmichael's were Scottish. My family was German. I know that my mother has English roots, and so I'm a mutt. That's how I like my dogs also, mutts. That is. No purebred for us, none of us. Not me, not my kids, not my animals. Anyway, where am I on this? So George, you're on my mind. What a great, great song. Hoagie wrote the song, the music to the song, and Stuart, a friend of his, wrote the lyrics, and the lyrics were about Hoagie's sister, Georgia. It was not about the state of Georgia. They probably had never even been in Georgia. But the state of Georgia sure ate that one up, and I don't blame them. It's a wonderful song. Thank you, Cousin Hoagie. When we moved to the Kansas City area, our kids were eight and nine years old. We used to take them down to what was called the Hallmark Crown Center, 
and it's owned by Hallmark Cards, and it's a wonderful place with all kinds of shops and restaurants and hotels and fountains and aquariums and Lego lands and all this stuff. But they also have what's called an ice terrace. Well, it's a great place to ice skate. And we used to take our girls there and Allie would skate all around real fast and stuff. And Erin would try to do her twirls like a true figure skater. It was fun watching them. And once in a while, we'd skate with them. And it was just a fun family time. We used to take youth groups there as my girls got a little older. We were youth group leaders. And we took them down there. And if you've ever had about 30, 40 early teenagers, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old, basically. It's like herding cats, trying to keep track of all of them. But we had a good time there. There There's also a big bowling alley in the Kansas City area that had a ice skating rink in the bowling alley also. They'd have hockey games and stuff there. And that was fun to go there. Maybe bowl a couple lines, then go skating. Wonderful place. That place is now closed. But the Ice Terrace at Hallmark's Crown Center is very much open. We just went there right after the Christmas season. My daughter Allie and her family came up. So we all went skating. Well, Kim and I didn't go skating. But her and her husband Ryan and the kids, they went skating. It was fun watching them. And everybody had to get off the ice. And the Zamboni would come along and fix the ice. If you have never watched a Zamboni do that, it's it's fun. It's almost as fun as watching all those people out there trying to skate and a few of them skating really good, weaving in and out of all the ones that are about to fall and all that stuff. Then we went over to the Union Station. It's the old train station that I guess Amtrak still has a stop there, but it's basically a tourist destination now with Science City and all these wonderful things going on there. And it's always fun to go there. And we usually go down to Crown Center and Union Station during the Christmas season. There's a little restaurant we always go to. Even as the kids get older, they want to go there. Food's not very good, but it has a train that delivers it to you. And that's a lot of fun. So nothing like ice skating with the family. Now for our unusual fact of the week. Our unusual fact this week is about bodily functions, for lack of a better term of it. Your eyes blink around 20 times a minute. That's over 10 million times a year. Your ears never stop growing. Something to look forward to. Earwax is actually a type of sweat. The only muscle in your body that never tires is the heart. If you live to age 70, your heart will have beat around 2.5 billion times. So I'm I'm going towards 3 billion now. Woo-hoo! Always have a goal. The entire surface of your skin is replaced every month, which put another way means you have about 1,000 different skins in your lifetime. Kind of like a snake, I guess. Spread across their lifetime... Most people spend an average of one whole year sitting on the toilet. Now, I'm not really liking potty humor because I always feel like maybe I push the boundaries of this podcast when I do a little potty humor, and I usually come back and apologize, but in my heart, I'm a 10 or 12-year-old kid so often. So I've got one here on these unusual facts, and I almost didn't do it, and now I'm doing it. So, I apologize in advance. Don't get uptight or embarrassed or offended or any of that. It's just a bodily function. And I'm just a 10 or 12 year old kid. You know, you say something about something and then laugh with your buddies. I think that was the funniest thing. Well, here we go. If you wee wee enough, or pee pee, or like I like to call it pee, you pee enough every month to fill a bathtub. Ooh, where's the munchies? They haven't chimed in on that one. When I was a kid, 10 or 12, there again, old Vern, the town marshal, would flood the baseball infield, the Little League Park there. There's a street light right on the corner, right behind the backstop that was right behind home plate there at the field. And he flood that every probably 1st of November 
and it would stay a ice skating rink right through March, possibly April. You'd have to reflood it every once in a while, put a new coat of ice. We had no Zambonis there, and that was our ice skating rink. And we would gather there and ice skate on the weekends. Or at night, we'd go down and ice skate because that street light illuminated it. And we'd skate and have fun and be skating a couple, three of us boys. And one of those pretty girls would drive by with her boyfriend. And we'd all start claiming that she could be our girlfriend. Next thing you know, we'd be rolling in the snow trying to hit each other because we were fighting over that girl that was either older or prettier than us anyway and had nothing to do with us whatsoever, absolutely nothing. But that didn't matter. We were fighting with our friends. We'd play games. We'd have races. We'd skate and we'd skate and we'd skate. We had figure skates, every one of us. None of us had hockey skates. We thought those were weird things. And since we didn't have a hockey team or play hockey, that was okay. Then one year this man came and he organized a hockey team and saw all of us little boys went and played a hockey game up at the ski area. It used to have a hockey rink at the base of the mountain there. And some of those kids we were playing, they wore hockey skates. I never knew how they could really get going because you use that little serrated edge on your figure skates to kind of dig into the ice and get going real fast. But those hockey skaters skated differently. That's the first time I ever saw anybody with hockey skates when we played them up there. Of course, I think we got our butts beat pretty bad, but that's okay. We had fun and we only did it one year. Only one year our community had a hockey team. There's also skating around once the little resort opened right next to my little hometown. There's a little pond there. And I guess the pond was quite deep. And it would freeze over and people would skate on that. Usually tourists and people that came up skiing, you know, staying at the hotel there at the resort. And I never skated there, but I think our girls went a couple times. By the time we had our children, I'm not sure they were flooding the old field anymore. I know they stopped flooding the baseball field, and they went over to a field over by the gray school, and it was larger, and they had banks to kind of hold the water in while it was freezing, and they made the ice skating rink there, and I'm not sure it was ever as popular as that one at the old Little League field. One of my favorite memories of that ice skating rink so one night I was down there skating all by myself, just probably talking to myself, singing to myself, playing some kind of game in my head. And Jeff, who just lived across the street and down the road just a little bit, he came, we started skating, and we had fun. And finally he said, you cold? I want to go home. You want to come over? So we went over to his house and nobody was there. So he said, do you want to have some milk? Now I know I've told this story in an older episode. So I said, sure, I want a glass of milk. So he pulls out this box and he pours some white powder in a glass and then in some water and he stirs it up and it was powdered milk. And of course, by that time, my head was into this stuff, a gag, a maggot. So I tried it and I tried to be polite because Jeff was a nice, nice guy. And I didn't drink all my milk and I've never drank powdered milk since. But that is a warm memory for me. I hear he's a veterinarian clear up in Idaho or somewhere like that anymore. He's probably long retired. I knew his family very well. My mom could look down at that skating rink until if I was down there from our house on the hill. She'd just stand there at the big picture window that overlooked the town, Continental Divide. Look straight down to her right and there was the skating rink. So if I was too late, she could just stand at the porch and yell my name. I knew it was time to go home. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once you've arrived, you can find links to our podcasts. One of them is to our YouTube channel. Once you've arrived at the YouTube channel, you can hear our different podcasts or watch our videos. And by watching our videos, you have to click the link that says live. Once you're there at YouTube, they've changed it. They used to all be integrated together, but YouTube has changed that now. So if you want to see our YouTube videos, just click on live. When a person is being kind, it is not by accident. Always be kind. 
I'll be back next Wednesday. Enjoy this winter. Peace out.